So we took the decision that okay, let's build a small factory in in Mumbai and create a hygienic working condition so that we actually can have women on the shop floor. From that decision to the CXOs, uh, all three CXOs are women. The chief growth officer um, is a woman. and uh, the chief operating officer is a woman and it's not just women i think they are accomplished leaders and it's such a pleasure to be working alongside them so i truly believe that um, that we really have to be as vocal as possible today we had ahana gautam on the pod ahana is the ceo and co-founder of open secret open secret is india's leading food and beverages company through open secret she's looking to unjunk india In this conversation we covered her early life what shaped her the most while growing up the values she picked up from her mother around financial independence and importance of education what did she learn from her time in the US what made her move back to India the journey of open secret and the magical outcome she holds for open secret her advice to diasporas who are looking to move back to India her passion for empowering women in the workforce Who is she outside of work and much more? Now I bring you Ahana. Ahana, thank you so much for coming on the pod. Thank you so much for having me, Shiva, and I'm really looking forward to this conversation. Likewise, uh, Ahana, a good starting point could be maybe you can walk us through your early life. uh how was it growing up for you and also what shaped you the most uh while growing up uh, of course i think um i have to say that the experiences i had as a kid really shaped me who i am today and specifically two kinds of experiences first um i would say i, w- I grew up in a very small city of rajasthan a tier 3 city called bharatpur and um i was raised by a single working mother and i still remember i would come back from school and uh, used to eat a lot of this junk food you know while coming back and uh, bhujia ghewa these were my favorite foods and uh, and i always like used to sit and study so as a result um of course was a very very overweight kid while growing up and i'm not exaggerating when i say i was really 3x my current size so that definitely stayed with me that experience and the second thing i would say shiva growing up in that part of the country uh where um, i think the education among women or girls it was the lowest and it was so common around me that the objective or the life or the dream of the girl should be around getting married uh maybe getting education so that you can build up a resume to get married the north star was always around being a good marriage material and i would say what really you ask me what if i have to say one thing which really shaped me would be my mother and she was such a driving force she acted as a shield um against all these societal norms which existed in fact my brother who is 5 years older to me also went to iit bombay so a lot of people used to tell ask my mother ki you know aapka iit ka sapna your iit dream is already done because your son went to iit bombay why are you encouraging your daughter to prepare for iit and how will you find a groom for her again you know coming back to that marriage north star um and she always taught me two things she said a you have to be financially independent um and you have to really work hard towards it because she could make a lot of decisions in life she could live the life she wanted because she was financially independent so that definitely stayed with me and the second thing she taught me shiva was education levels the playing field and she told me that you know um if you get to a right platform um and that was actually one of the core motivation to go to iit because it doesn't matter where you come from it doesn't matter what your gender is uh it's a same platform and then it's on you how you really want to leverage that platform so these two things have definitely shaped a lot of decisions in my life um and i think uh, it will be a, it will it will be the right thing to say that whatever i am today it's because it's because of my angel mother 
Yeah, no, love it. Uh, Anna, any idea, you know, how her values were developed? Do you like, did you, were you able to get a sense of that? No, no, definitely. And I think because um, her father, um, I could call him a feminist. And he always encouraged my mother to be really well educated. Imagine she was a professor during that time and that to not, I mean, she was teaching economics, she was teaching commerce. So those subjects which were not associated um, with women. So, of course, you know, when she was growing up, there wasn't a lot of social media to get inspired or to get the right exposure. But um, I strongly believe that my Nana played such an important role and that confidence gave her the wings. And of course, then when she saw the world through her eyes and how in financial independence can actually enable a lot of women to take the right decisions, she really wanted the same for me. But I have to say that it's it has to come back to role models, to really showing the girls pretty early on that um, you are meant for much bigger things than just marriage. Yeah, we have some uh, parallels. I am also uh, raised by a single mother and, and she went against all the norms. Now, of course, as we, you know, as we get older, we can sort of like make sense of these things. And her values were actually, you know, adopted from her father and her father was the way, you know, your Nana's, Nana was. But Anna, and uh, post that, uh, you know, you went to uh, IIT and then you got into, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Harvard. Yeah. And how was your experience like in the U.S.? What were the learnings and uh, experiences that you got in the U.S.? Yeah, no, I think um, the two colleges, of course, one was IIT Bombay and the second was Harvard, Harvard Business School where I did my MBA. Um, they were very transformational and very different. I think couple of things which I realized when I was at Harvard Business School and the school's mission is creating leaders who will make a meaningful difference in the world. So that reminded me of the privileges I have received. First of all, imagine a young girl from a city called Bharatpur got the opportunity to study at IIT Bombay and then studying at Harvard Business School. You really need to understand the privileges that you have, and especially as a women leader. And, um, and I do feel that a lot of us should take this not as a choice that we need to make a difference, but as a responsibility that uh, we have to, we have to make a difference. So first of all, um, it really gave me this purpose that you have to build this life around a bigger purpose, which is beyond yourself. That's number one. The number two thing, Shiva, I would say it actually gave me perspective. It actually gave me confidence. Um, and I have to accept that till that time, I was someone who was running behind brands to prove my worth, right? You know, IIT is a tag, Howard is a tag. But what made me realize that when I was sitting in a classroom and I was making a comment and sometimes you think, oh, these people, they are the smartest people in the world and they are making the same comment like you are doing and you feel that, okay, you know, uh, if they can create so many amazing things, why can't I? And it just made me realize that all the amazing things that have happened in the world, there is no extraordinary person. It's all about ordinary people doing extraordinary things. And it really gave me this confidence that, you know, if you set your mind to something, uh, you can totally achieve it and sky is the limit. So that perspective, that identify your passion, identify your purpose, and you can be unstoppable if you truly put a lot of hard work behind it. And that's something which I truly started doing because after that, it was for me that I will only work on something which I'm really, really passionate about, which drives me internally um, and stop seeking um, external validation. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like uh, one of the biggest uh, learnings for you was, you know, uh, it gave you or it empowered you to really believe in yourself yeah. and think bigger. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, and I think about five years back, uh, uh, and I, in fact, you had a great life there. You were working at a yeah. great company, you had friends, uh, and about five years back, you took a one ticket, uh, flight back to India. And, and of course it's very natural. A lot of friends were act, probably were shocked 
So what gave you the conviction or what was the reason behind it? What was your framework like of moving back and just leaving, uh, you know, all the good things that you've uh, worked for in the U.S. and coming back in an uncertainty or uncertain world? Yeah, no, it's, it's actually very funny because, you know, a lot of my friends, uh, they were a bit shocked and surprised that why are you moving back to India? Uh, did you not get H-1B? And I said, no, I do have H-1B. I do have the visa. Uh, but I really want to come back and goes back to the purpose. I want to create a meaningful difference. And the reason why I was excited about this move, Shiva, it also goes back to the earlier thing that I said, um, growing up as a kid, right? I saw when I was in the US, I still remember visiting Whole Foods. And it was a world of healthy food and beverages. They had no junk product in that store. And it made me realize why this access is not present in India. Imagine we are a country where putting things on the moon, but when it comes to basic access to healthy foods, healthy beverages, there was zero to no innovation. And especially when I was planning to come back, all the big categories, the incumbent brands had majority of the share and there wasn't a lot of right products created for the families of the country. Um, so, that is something which I also saw, right? I mean, I grew up in a small city and um, I saw how my mother struggled with that. And um, I saw people back when I was studying in the HBS. Um, first was, of course, you know, I saw how my mother struggled uh, with that. And what was surprising that a generation later, my sister-in-law was struggling with the same thing, where she wasn't able to find a brand which can provide healthy foods and beverages for my niece. And that made me wonder that how come we haven't been able to crack this problem when we are a country of uh, country known for solid tech innovation. So that was the core motivation because I associated myself with this problem. Um, and B, it was also a huge problem. It's the, the food and beverage industry is, um, is estimated to be a $200 billion category in 2026. And if you think what's happening, especially post-COVID, health is a trend. Uh, there's a McKinsey report which says that health is going to be a trillion dollar uh, trend. And uh, and that was the core motivation to come back and to be part of that um, movement that how can we, and we call it unjunking, because I truly believe that when it comes to food, you really love eating what you love eating and you don't want to change the habits but uh, that's the idea how can we give you a better version of what you love to eat and that's why you eat junk but we're going to give you an unjunk version of that so i thought let me come back to india and start this unjunking movement and create uh, as many unjunking or unjunk products as we can while keeping the taste uh, same yeah. So uh, it seems like, Ahana, you already had an idea. You had full conviction in it. You moved back. How was it, you know, the early days for you? Meaning, uh, now you know, you have a clear vision. This is what I want to build. Uh, who was your first believer in terms of funding you while you were fundraising? Interesting question. Um, I think very fortunate to have great um, investors um, in the form of mentors. So I remember uh, Avnish Bajaj, who's the managing director at Matrix. Um, he has been a big supporter and he came in in the first round pretty early on um, and has been a great mentor to me from day one. Also fantastic um, angel investor like Vijay Shekhar Sharma, founder of Paytm. And, and I believe that, you know, most of them can actually relate to the problem. Um, and also they can also relate to the TAM that is such a huge TAM and they could see that there were wonderful companies that got created in the US um, and, and I truly believe and I still believe that India is at an inflection point. Uh, this is new India. What is changing is I still remember when I have worked in consumer. So we always used to talk about this inverted uh, uh, triangle where the, only the top 1% was responsible for the entire consumption. But if you see what is happening, and this is the reason why it's such an exciting time to be in, to be in India, that as we grow from a 3 trillion economy to a 5 trillion or 10 trillion economy, uh, the consumption is going to become like a diamond structure where a middle class is going to drive a lot of consumption for the country. And when that happens, 
you can see a lot of families demanding much better products which are better for them better for their families so i think it's a huge opportunities for home grown brands uh, to create a really big outcome uh, because that's what where the future is going to be in india got it and anna uh, i i think you had tweeted about it where you said uh, times have changed where indian consumers are only seeking international brand uh now they are looking forward to indian or home grown brand why would you say that i think it's so interesting you know i remember when i was in the us a lot of my family would say that can you get this x brand from the us can you get the y brand from the us but with this wave of entrepreneurship which has happened a lot of folks are really proud of the brands that that they consume and um, and you could see the shift uh, when they talk about premium products when they talk about high quality products lot of home grown brands uh, come up and not only in food in other categories i think mama earth is such a fantastic story right they're creating disruption not only in india but they are creating in india for the world and people are associating um, and i have worked in a in, in an mnc which creates shampoo but imagine uh, a home grown brand like mama earth creating a disruption in such an established category like shampoo with very basic consumer driven inside and i think that's exactly what we want to do that you know you love your biscuit which is filled with maida we're going to give you uh an unjunk biscuit where there will be no maida will be made with millets no refined sugar made with jaggery no palm oil made with real butter so people are becoming more and more aware about what goes into the products and when they see that a lot of indian companies are creating and hearing and listening the, to the customers and then reflecting on that and making products which can truly add value to their lives they are sharing a lot of love to these to these brands the other thing shiva which i should definitely give credit to is the post geo movement you know they earlier they used to be so much information asymmetry like we are here i mean you you are talking about my journey because of social media right you saw certain tweets that i have shared on twitter now we have more than 500 million indians on digital and they can hear uh, what you are talking about they can actually read about the purpose of the company they can read about the purpose of the brand and it's there's no way you can actually fake it you know people are pretty smart uh, to see if you are not being authentic and i think that's the reason why there's a huge opportunity for authentic brands who are really creating consumer first products to make a difference and in return we are seeing a lot of customer love i still remember i wrote about the purpose of open secret and that one post on linkedin got more than 2 million views and there was so much love because people again associated with the problem people really appreciated that there is an indian brand solving for them and creating uh products that they really wanted and when was the last time a big multinational would have done that right they're always thinking about india which comes after us after like lot many countries so that's i think a a big big difference got it and uh, anna what's the magical outcome that you have in mind for open secret i think shiva the magical outcome has to be you know i think it's it's the customer love that you get on a daily basis to be honest i don't think as a founder you can really build this for the end goal you really have to be in it for the process and the process i will divide for myself into two parts one is the impact that you're creating you hear the customer stories um i also hear a lot from the women on the shop floor who are making the products and they say that you know thank you for giving us this employment and making us financially independent so on a daily basis um when you truly see the difference that your work is making uh, that really inspires you and i personally think that i'm really driven by that the second thing i would say shiva is the personal growth and i am a firm believer of in the power of compounding and um, i have worked in the best companies have always been surrounded by the smartest people but i can tell you with 100% confidence that the learning i had as a founder it's completely unmatched um it's it's such a tough journey 
and I know it's very easy to use the word tough, but it's something like you have to experience it to really feel the meaning of tough. Um, and it has really shaped me, the kind of person I am, both professionally and personally. And the exponential curve, the way you really have to grow yourself. I mean, the company is growing at such a fast pace. If you are the CEO of the company, um, you really need to learn to be that 100 crore CEO. Um, and then you, when you started, you hired like maybe two people, zero revenue. Now you have 150 plus people, 100 crore revenue. Then you have to scale along with the company. So for me, it's always about the process and believing in the power of compounding and how I am becoming a better version of me every single day. Mm -hmm. uh, Anna, it's, you know, uh, from the outside, it might seem that, you know, journey has been you know, upward of open secret, but of course it's a lot of ups and downs. Was there a time, Anna, which was really truly an inflection point, which just gave you so much confidence and courage that, hey, this is working. And from here on, which is going to go massive. I think, um, honestly, Shiva, uh, I think when we launched our first line of product, which was cookies, and we called it Nutty Cookies, where we unjunked with nuts. Um, when we launched that product and the kind of repeat and the kind of customer love we received, it was very clear to me that this unjunking positioning um, and this better for you category uh, there will be a huge outcome and even now i'm very confident that a billion dollar brand will be created in the healthy food and beverage space and it's all about the execution so since then i've been very clear and i still know that um, i think it's a fantastic category to be in the execution is really tough in food because it's a low gross margin product um, and you really have to execute really really well so for me, it has been all about how can we be an execution machine? How can we uh, remove all the inefficiencies from the system? The PMF is is pretty clear. Yeah, got it. And uh, Anna, one of the values you got from your mother was uh, financial independence. And, and you are implementing that into your own company where, you know, that's one of the missions where you want to empower women and make them financially independent by also giving them uh, flexible working hours. And in fact, I think over 75% of your uh, C-level executives are women. What has been the thought process for you? Like how have you really implemented it and, and really doing it? And uh, yeah. So I was just, Shiva, I'm really tired of people just talking about women empowerment and doing nothing. Like absolutely nothing. I think a lot of companies will come on 8th of March, will clap and then <laughs> nothing happens. And I think that it's the time to take actions and not to just talk about it, but do something about it. And as a women leader, I felt I have no right to comment about women empowerment if I don't do the same in my circle of control. Of course, I have a limited circle of control beyond that is extremely difficult, but at least let me do that. So, and it will reflect in every decision that we take at Open Secret. I still remember when uh, I was thinking about, okay, where to manufacture the products. And you always would think that, you know, manufacturing is not a forte, let's just outsource it. And I still remember visiting these manufacturing sites in Bhavandi and um, there were basically no toilets for women. And I thought, how am I going to employ women on the shop floor in such facilities? So we took the decision that, okay, let's build a small factory in, in Mumbai and create a hygienic working condition so that we actually can have women on the shop floor. From that decision to the CXOs, uh, all three CXOs are women. The chief growth officer um, is a woman and uh, the chief operating officer is a woman. And it's not just women. I think they are accomplished leaders um and it's such a pleasure and a privilege to be working alongside them so i truly believe that um, that we really have to be as vocal as possible to make a difference because i mean women participation in india is, is around 20 percent we are behind uh, the last time i read was we're behind our neighbors behind bangladesh behind nepal so we really or everyone has to work together to actually change the stats. Yeah, yeah. I think one of the, uh, you know, factors, if let's say if India doesn't reach its 
highest potential. Yeah. It's really about putting women into the workforce and we are the lowest. If we don't do that, Absolutely. there's literally no chance to uh, reach the highest potential. I mean, we have one gender missing otherwise and then uh, yeah. a lot of opportunities. No, And thanks, uh, Anna. I really love the... Uh, I mean, in fact, like I've, I've not seen any company doing what you're doing. Uh, and you're not just saying and you're doing it as you just uh, talked about. Uh, with this, Anna... Uh, I, so my co-pilot wants to get in, but I got another question before that. Hold on, Panzo. Uh, uh, <laughs> so, you know, I'm sure, Anna, you know, you've moved back, uh, you're building a company uh, and it's growing. I'm sure you have friends in the US. Uh, they've been, you know, they've been in touch. They've been talking with you. Probably they are calling you for your advice of, you know, helping them th think through uh, their move back to India. What has been your advice? How have you uh, helped your friends? I think it's very simple. Just take that flight. There hasn't been a better time than today to build a company in India. Imagine, as I said, um, we are going to move from 3 trillion to 5 trillion to 10 trillion. It's going to happen right in front of us. Uh, since independence, we have reached to three. So you can just see the exponential growth journey. It's such a fantastic opportunity to be part of this India's growth story. And, and the other thing is there are also a lot of white spaces that you can actually solve for. So my uh, recommendation and I tell them that, you know, you just have to stop thinking, take that flight and come back and you're not going to regret the decision. Yeah, no, totally uh, aligned on that. I think it took us 75 years to reach uh, 3 trillion and the next 3 trillion would be in seven years and it's only gonna yeah. uh, grow exponentially. And then really it's about just taking that flight, coming back and uh, just, you know, uh, figure out what's for you uh, yeah. and just stay at it for long enough. Think too much. Sometimes yeah. we over-intellectualize. Um, so, <laughs> so that really... That really sometimes, you know, it, the first step is the hardest step. Once you take that step, you'll just figure out the path. So yeah. my recommendation would be just take that first step. <laughs> so with this, Anna, uh, my co-pilot is asking, uh, what's something you're obsessed about outside of work? Wow. Can I just be very honest? Honestly, there is nothing right now outside work. Um, I think the only thing I'm obsessed about is building open secret. And a lot of like, a lot of my friends don't get it. A lot of my friends thinks it's unhealthy. And I find it very hard to articulate that when you, once you find a purpose, it's very hard for you to not keep investing every single second. And um, I am always uh, on. And I'm always working, whether it's Monday to Sunday. And I'm not uh, doing it because I'm forced. Uh, I just do it because I just don't know anything else more meaningful than this. And one transition which has happened, it's very interesting that, you know, there are different phases in life. One is the first phase is uh, pleasure seeking, instant gratification. The second phase is happiness, where you do things for your own materialistic gain. The third is the joy where you create and you build something which truly makes a difference and creates impact. I think, of course, I was a person who was seeking uh, pleasure, instant gratification. I think I've crossed that st stage one, stage two and stage three. And when you are aspiring for that joy, I don't think um, anything else uh, gives you more joy than building what you are building. Uh, and it truly is... Uh, is a meditation and i honestly i love uh, being uh, working on the holidays because then you can actually do a lot of thinking without any distraction yeah yeah so this is what you would be doing if you have uh, enough money enough attention you'll be doing the same thing and then you're in a good position you love uh, what do you do for work I mean, I'm not building this for money. So it's not that, oh, I'm building this to get that amount of money. And then once I get the money, I'm going to leave this, as I said. And there's nothing wrong. Uh, let me be very, very honest. There's nothing wrong in building for money. I think you need to be very clear. Why are you building this? And the why for you has to be very clear. And there is no right or wrong why. Uh, because that will be absolutely uh, wrong on my part to comment on someone else's why. 
everyone is so unique for me the why is the difference the meaning the purpose so i would hope that i have this privilege and opportunity to wake up every single day and to keep building what i'm building right now i love it and ahana what's your typical day like from getting up in the morning to going to bed at night oh very interesting so this is a typical day of course there are certain exceptions uh but uh, i wake up early so i wake up around 5:30 um every single day and uh, i now i think this is the fittest i have ever been so i try and uh, get a workout from 6 to 6:50 the 50 minutes workout and what i have realized that i have more energy and um i feel really good because i am working out i'm eating right so so 5 to so 6 to 6:50 i'll be i'll be in the gym then i'll reach work uh by 8 8:30 in the morning and then uh, till 10 pm i am at work and then i come back and i sleep so so that's a that's a typical day at work got it and uh what's your relationship with health you said you know now i mean at the moment you're the fittest you've ever been yeah. was there a, anything that happened that triggered or made you really focus on health I think first like my childhood I I I have written about this uh, on my LinkedIn as well and I posted two pictures which was basically the transformation one was the older me the overweight me and the current me and people actually could not recognize and they said thank you for telling us that it's the same person otherwise we thought you have posted uh, two people so and it's not just about weight right it's about how you feel it's also about the kind of energy levels that you have i remember during my entrepreneurship journey there was a phase especially during covid where you were always sitting um you were not uh, moving a lot and i could see how unfit i felt and uh, this is a marathon this is not uh, a three month or a six month project that i'm doing and people don't realize the biggest compounding happens with your health and if you make the right choices every single day 10 years down the line you are going to appreciate those choices so much and uh, i think that's something uh, which i keep in mind so even my food choices i am a big bhujia fan uh, growing up in rajasthan i need bhujia uh, with my poha with my dal chawal every single day i'm not going to stop eating the uh, Uh, the bhujia but now i will eat this open secret baked bhujia again you know making the right choice every single day and it will have a, a really high compounding and for me health is 80% food this is something which i have seen you know i have there have been days when i used to work out a lot but absolutely no difference in my health and as soon as i just tweaked my food magic happens so if someone who's focused on health i would really recommend first focus on food and of course start with some basic movement you don't have to go and hit the gym maybe like do a 30 40 minutes walk uh, i think that will be a great starting point yeah 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 no i think uh, going to the gym it's it's it should be more about how you feel than how you look yeah 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 and uh, and ahana is there anything that you've been wanting to learn but just haven't got the time yet very interesting i think um I really would want to spend more time uh, reading books because um I do feel that the more you read about especially about history I um it really enables you to build a perspective because I think history repeats itself so you can predict better so given if I have some time I would love to read more about history so like industrial revolution and all those you know um major events which had happened in the world and how the world was a different place altogether after that got it what's your playlist like in the gym i listen to a lot of uh, punjabi songs so uh, whether it's uh, lover from diljeet um, for all these songs i just i just love that got it and uh, ana if you could invite three guests uh dead or alive for dinner uh who would they be and why very interesting hmm so first i think um, i would love to invite uh, uh mr narendra modi uh, the prime minister and i think 
the energy that he has, the amount of work he does on a daily basis, uh, the dream and the ambition he has, I think would love to just get his perspective um, and learn from that. That's number one. Number two, I would really would like to invite, um, I'm just thinking, but it's an interesting question. Who else would I want to learn from? I think uh, the professor, he's um, the late professor, Mr. Clay Christensen. And um, he was someone I have really admired a lot. And he wrote this book called Innovator's Dilemma and uh, How Will You Measure Your Life? So I would love to have a chat with him about Open Secret, about disruption. What would his thought be? What would his guidance be if I had that opportunity? Because I don't think there could be anybody else who can speak on disruption better than him. So would have loved to um, invite Clay. That would be number two. Um, and third... Um, I think I would love to have Falguni from Naika. I think she is a fantastic women leader. And um, I just really admire the way she has built Naika. Um, also, what, what I have seen that, you know, purpose and passion has no age. And, uh, and there's nothing more powerful than seeing a woman in a sari creating magic so would love to um, have her and learn from her journey of building Nike. yeah yeah intersection of politics uh innovation and tech women leader yeah uh, totally aligned and i really want to understand how narendra modi thinks like how his mind functions yeah how his mind functions absolutely how he sells india the indian dream outside india i would love to get I think he's such a fantastic, he has also great marketing. The way he markets India is amazing. So would, maybe we'll also get some marketing tips from him. <laughs> and another thing I think about, like in a day, he makes such important decisions. It's not just one and many. And doesn't he get uh, fatigue <laughs> from making this? But it's it's fascinating. Uh, but yeah, and uh, Alfonso is asking, can he be the chef, uh, Hana? That's okay. Absolutely, absolutely. Please just ensure that you have Bujia. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Anna. It was a lot of fun. Thank you so much for coming on the pod and sharing your journey. I really, really appreciate it. No, thank you so much for having me and I really enjoyed uh, the conversation.